In 2019, Morgan Stanley published an article outlining women's impact on the American economy. The number of prime working-age women in the U.S. has been increasing steadily, and most of them are single and completely focused on their careers. These women will continue to have a greater representation in the workforce, helping to boost wages. Economist Ellen Zentner explained, In the past, education or lower-paying occupational choices largely drove the pay gap. Today, motherhood is by far the largest contributor to the wage gap, since women who become mothers often choose to stop working or work fewer hours. But it looks like there will be fewer and fewer mothers over the next couple of decades as women choose to commit themselves to work rather than start a family. The number of single women in the U.S. is expected to increase by 1.2% every year from 2018 to 2030, compared to a 0.8% increase for the overall population. This is likely going to result in 45% of women between the ages of 25 and 44 who will be single and childless by 2030. This is an increase from 41% of women in that age group being single and childless in 2018. These shifting lifestyle norms are enabling more women with or without children to work full time, which should continue to raise the labor force participation rate among single females, Zentner says. Single women spend more than the average family household, especially when it comes to travel, nightlife, eating out, skincare and beauty, retail shopping, etc. So, of course, economists will attempt to frame it in a positive light that nearly half of women are single and childless. It can only be good for the economy. However, few are considering the negative impact this will have on greater society. The birth replacement rate is already trending below replacement, and surveys show that women who are unmarried and childless tend to struggle more with mental illness and feelings of self-confidence. Single, childless women may be buying more things at the mall and traveling to various American cities, but at what cost in the long run? The bedrock of any healthy society is the nuclear family, and it's sad to think that we will see fewer and fewer families in the future, which of course means fewer children and happily married couples. Meanwhile, Young women in their prime working years devote themselves to a career and a boss who doesn't truly care about them, have promiscuous sex that hurts their mental health, and miss out on the true lifelong fulfillment that comes with being a wife and mother. A growing number of women are choosing not to have kids and as a result are advancing in their careers and using their wealth to buy property and travel more. This is an article by Bloomberg, I think, came out of their Business Week edition. Ashley Mararo isn't married and doesn't have kids, and she has a message for women just like her. You can still have it all. I love my life and feel very fulfilled, says Mararo, who froze her eggs in 2018 to keep her options open. The 43-year-old feels a deep sense of satisfaction from her job as a sales representative for a maker of medical devices, which brings her into contact with patients, and she relishes all of the lifestyle and financial freedoms that come with being a single, child-free woman in a well-paying job. Mararo, who was married for four years before getting divorced in 2008, enjoys an enviable degree of financial independence. The West Village resident owns her own apartment, which she bought in 2019 for around $900,000, and then renovated. And in June, she closed on a summer home in New Jersey's Long Beach Island with her sister Christina, who's a few years older and also single with no kids. Ashley figures she's taken 10 trips in the last 12 months and often friends with a large group of about 25 people who are largely unmarried and don't have children. Those trips at 43 sound like they suck. I do <laughs> not want... To go on that trip frankly yeah so everything you just described there is kind of like a a symptom of what uh, i would call the wider mating crisis and it seems to be like a, a cultural kind of prioritizing of the male default of economic success the kind of girl boss lean in kind of culture seems to be set up as what uh, the vision for success for women uh, tends to be. And you, you have a lot of even corporate giants kind of getting in on this. Um, a few years ago, you had Morgan Stanley, the investment bankers, put out a report that forecasts that 45% of prime working age women between the ages of 25 and 44 will be single and childless uh, by 2030, the largest share uh, in history. And uh, it's not entirely obvious to me that this is in women's best interests. I mean, I'm pretty libertarian in my sensibilities about you know, freedom of choice for whatever someone wants to do with their life. 
Um, but it, it, it seems to me like a, you can see the kind of corporate interest in uh, opening up more worker drones for 60 hour work weeks. Uh, you know, the, the workplace now, women are crushing it. It's a brain based economy rather than a brawn based economy. So uh, that, that seems to be in their interests. And it's weird. It's like it's almost like Huxley and it's like Brave New World. Have you read that, Chris? Yes. Yeah. So it's very Huxley. And it's like um, this kind of hedonistic life of going on lots of trips, having very atomized type of sex. Singlehood will be on the rise. You won't get attached to any one person. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. That that kind of thing. And it seems a little bit dystopian to me um, to kind of, you know, to hurtle towards that uh, dystopian vision. But uh, that that's the the modern mating crisis we find ourselves in. And uh, yeah, that, that, that's where we are. This girl at work said something to me the other day and I like can't get it out of my head. I heard a baby around her. I was like, oh God, that's free birth control for me. And she's like, oh, that makes me think of my little baby. And I was like, yeah, I'm too selfish. I don't want kids. Like I have a dog. That's enough for me. A couple of days later, she's like, so you don't want kids, but you have a dog. Do you have like a boyfriend or anything? And I was like, no, I've never had a boyfriend. She's like, how old are you? I said 27. She's like, and you've never had a boyfriend. And I like never really cared. But there's something about her like saying that that really hit me this time because like I've never been on even like two dates with the same person. Like even guys mm. I've talked to or like hooked up with, they'll slowly stop talking to me and then I find out they have a girlfriend or they get into a new relationship like a week later. And like when I was younger and I didn't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, I'd be like, it's cause I'm fat. I used to weigh like 320 pounds. I lost 160 pounds. It's not like I'm being hit up every day, every week, even every month with like people in my DMs or like messaging me on Snapchat trying to get with me. It's like no one hits me up. No it's not even like I'm being selective with who I'm picking and like turning people away. It's just like people <laughs> aren't coming up to me. And I don't, I don't understand. It's not like I have an issue with people like wanting to hook up with me, but if it tries to go a step further, they're like, absolutely not. No, I don't wow. want to just like hook up with random people that I don't know. So I'll tell people that I don't want to hook up with them until I know them. And then they're like, well, you're a prude. I'm like, I literally can't win. Why it's like hitting me so hard this time is the fact that she had the audacity to ask, by choice and I just sit there and I'm like no <laughs> it's not by choice when I was younger I was like oh it's because I'm fat oh it's because I'm fat fat once I lose weight I'll have no problem and now that I'm like not fat I'm just like what is it what is the reason so now I'm gonna finish my energy drink and it's quite empowering to see women openly acknowledge and work on their challenges and darker aspects this transparency not only fosters self-growth, but also breaks down the stigma around imperfection, making it easier for others to accept and address their struggles. When women step forward with honesty about their flaws, they become beacons of realistic inspiration for others around them. It encourages a supportive community where everyone feels safer discussing and dealing with their issues rather than hiding them out of shame or fear. If women will admit their weaknesses and actively seek to improve them is a sign of incredible strength and maturity. Women who embrace this journey set a powerful example for others. They show that personal development is a continuous, often communal process. By doing so, they help to cultivate an environment where growth and self-acceptance go hand in hand. Encouraging other women to view such individuals as role models is beneficial. It not only promotes a healthier, more balanced approach to personal development, but also combats the loneliness that can come from isolating themselves with immature issues. Sharing the load and facing challenges together can lead to more fulfilling and less solitary lives. This way, the focus shifts from merely coping to thriving, fostering a more resilient and supportive community. Okay. And all throughout my 20s, was, this was something that actually really scared me it was something I was super ashamed of, super embarrassed by. I felt really left out. I just thought I was like one of the only people because I was around a lot of people that were in relationships or who were already married and way ahead of me on that timeline. And I was scared that it was never going to happen for me. I have dated, I have been in situationships with men, but I've never 
met someone who I feel like I would want to spend a long period of my life with, like who I would want to be in a relationship with. And this was something that in my early 20s, I actually just never saw myself falling in love or being in a relationship. I always just thought like I would be the person who would never be in love and love was stupid. And I think ultimately it was just a way to avoid getting hurt. I definitely have been in toxic situations where I've been treated really poorly by men and just used in, I think you could put two and two together for situationships in your early 20s. And I think it really did mess me up. And it wasn't until I really started doing a lot of therapy around my mental illnesses that I learned kind of the impact those relationships, not relationships, situationships had on me overall. And so when I say I've never had a boyfriend, it used to be something that I was super, super ashamed of because I just figured at this point in my life, 30, I would definitely be in a situation or be at least close to like getting married, having kids, living with someone, like all those things. Mm. I figured would already be like part of my life. It's always 30. It's like even if men don't say anything, women themselves say by 30. Okay. But they're not. I want to share a little bit about why I think that's okay and why I'm coming to terms with where I'm at in my life is where exactly where I'm supposed to be. Even though at times I find it really hard, I still believe that everything will work out how it's supposed to. And I'm just trying to have more faith that the universe will guide me wherever I need to go. But I truly did believe that by now, I would be in love and would have found my person. And I think it's super easy for people to say, like, if they've been in relationships in the past or had, like, really bad experiences, that to be like, girl, you're not missing out on anything. I totally respect where you're coming from. But I think if you're like me, and you've never experienced a relationship or been with someone that you really love and want to spend more time with or see your future with. The proportion of single women in the workforce is likely to grow as more women get bachelor's degrees, marry later, and wait until they're older to have children. About 80% of single women between the ages of 25 and 54 are working or seeking employment, Bauer said. And as the workforce changes, Corporations will have to rethink how they can support employees. Modern feminism has significantly influenced the lives of women by advocating for equality, empowerment, and the right to embrace both strengths and vulnerabilities. This movement supports women's efforts to address and overcome personal challenges by fostering an environment of acceptance and encouragement for self-improvement. By promoting concepts like body positivity, mental health awareness, and the dismantling of unrealistic standards, modern feminism encourages women to be transparent about their struggles without fear of judgment. Despite some critiques that modern feminism can be overly critical or divisive, many women continue to champion and invoke its principles because they see its potential for positive change. These women are blind. They do not see their life after 40. When they think about their lives after 40, they consider themselves lonely. That's all for today on Alpha Male. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications. You can support the channel by becoming a member or sending a super chat. Share your thoughts in the comments. See you tomorrow.